Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is the master bather, Scott Bradfield, and uh, we're going to do a short summer edition today. Uh, I've been reading uh, in the bathtub. I actually had a really nice week of reading the bathtub. I've been halfway. I'm halfway through reading the May Gray books in sequence. We've talked about these in the past, and this week I read about one of these a day. You can read them very quickly. So I read May Gray's Revolver, May Gray is Afraid. And May Gray's Mistake. These are all books from that Simonon originally wrote in the 50s. So we're getting into the 50s now. He started these books in the 30s, I believe. And one of the things I'm enjoying about reading all of these together in sequence is that normally when the books came, you know, when I bought all these May Gray books when I was 17 or 18, I started, I've been reading them all my life, is you buy them and, and there's no particular sequence, particularly the English translations. So there was a lot of matters of convenience, and they were they came out at different times, and they were in different paperback editions. So you have forty years of Maygrays, and when you read them out of sequence, you really lose a lot because one of the things is is I think it's an uneven series. One of the things I've really realized is that the the early books are okay, but they're a little bit more for, formal, old police procedural sort of things. They still have a bit of a Simonon stamp on them, but they're not as interesting. And all the stuff that um, really leaps out about May Gray, and you'll read many books out of sequence, which you'll think are really good, and then you'll read others that aren't that good. But while reading them uh, year by year, I'm finding that from like the late 40s through the 50s and 60s, the series really takes off. A number of things seem to have happened. The first, first 10 years, Simonon seems to always be looking somewhere exotic to take May Gray. So he goes to New York, and he goes to Holland, and he's always traveling the countryside. and also He's always on these weird adventures at different places, and he's rarely in Paris. And what happens with a lot of the late books, or the mid-period mid books, is he's almost always in Paris. He's always at home with Madame May Gray. Madame May Gray is not a big character in the early books either, whereas from the 40s and 50s, she is the stable presence. Every time May Gray is dealing with a case or interviewing somebody, he calls his wife and tells her when he's coming home, and she checks if he's going to eat, and you know, and all that kind of the routine quality of May Gray's life while he's dealing with these very unroutine people and violent people and violent events is what really makes the, the series so charming. You know, where he goes for lunch. Um, one of the things that comes out in some of these books is that he has this idea that when he starts a case, he starts drinking a certain drink, so a certain type of beer or a certain type of uh, brandy, and he tries to stay with that all through the case. Again, he's not a, he's not a detective in the uh, Sherlock Holmes sense. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't read clues or anything. He, in the early books, he does a little bit more Sherlock Holmes investigations, but in the middle to late books, almost none of that is occurring. There's lots of coincidences. And very often, the, the the resolution of the case comes from Maigre simply meeting people and, and, and trying to understand their relationships to one another. And that is the real real fun part of the books. Um, I thought I'd take you through through these three, which I enjoyed. I think these are the three of the best ones I've read in a long time. And I've read them before. All of these books I think I've read at another time. Uh, Maigre's Revolver is a very good little example. It's a really lovely little book. And it's it starts off with... Um, Madame Maigret calling her husband at work saying some young boy was here and um, he, he was looking for it. He looked really upset. And Madame Maigret, this, sort of, he, this young man, he's like 17, 18, uh, brings out some sort of concern in Madame Maigret. And Maigret goes home and he finds out that uh, not only has this young man come and gone, he's stolen a pistol. That May Gray had in the house. I think he bought it for protect. He bought it for his wife or something. He got it on a, on some trip. Someone gave it to him as a gift. I can't remember now. But the gun's gone. And then, quite coincidentally, he meets another person who's been trying to talk to him, who turns out to be the boy's father. Now, the rest of the story is basically about May Gray concerned about this young man who thinks he's afraid the kid's going to go kill somebody. The father gets involved in a murder, and. There's a, there is a little murder that, that occurs and a solution to the murder in the background. But the entire story is about May Gray going to find this young man and get the gun back and make sure he doesn't do something that he'll regret later. And it's uh, just basically how he finds him in London. And the, the real culminating scene is just him and this young man having dinner together. 
and him trying to help this kid through this this problem patch. And it comes out in this book and in a couple of the other books that uh, the Maygrays are childless. And it comes out in this book and in another one that Maygray at this is this period of his life, uh, he, he wishes he had a child. He wished he'd had a son. And it's, it's a really lovely little book. It has, a, it has a real nice closing to it. And then when the murder is solved, it's almost all in the background. You know, it, it's not the interesting part. But it's about fathers and children and, and parents and children. And in the course of the book, you also have this young man. There's a nice balance to it. Because Simon has a really good sense of balance. He's, an, he's not a plotter, but he really has a sense of balance in his books. So he has May Gray's interest in this young man. And the young man is actually of a pursuit trying to do something to help his father. And his father's kind of a hopeless mess. And this young man is getting into such a trouble because he's trying to help his father. It's a lovely little book. Um, another one I really like, May Gray is Afraid. I think all of these I read almost in a day. You can read them in a few sittings. They're so quick. And it's another one where he goes off to it. He goes to an, another town. And sees an old friend. And in the course of being there, he gets involved in a what looks like a series of of random murders. And in the in the course of it, he meets a man. I think his name is Monsieur Monsieur Vernou, um, uh, Alain Vernou, Vernou. Uh, and he and he's a he's a he went to school to become. He was from a well-off family. And he went to school to become a psychiatric doctor or something, and then he basically never worked because he didn't have to. He came from this horrible kind of family. And it's really about the kind of claustrophobia of these little villages and this man who's Maigret meets, who seems quite lost and who uh, is involved is is involved with the with a series of relationships in which somebody's been murdered. Two, two or three people have been murdered. But what happens in the course of it is that this kind of lost soul, and Maigret is really basically the, you know, the harvester of lost souls. He goes out and finds these, these people and tries to get to know them. In the course of uh, talking to them, he finds out that this man has had a relationship with basically kind of a town, you know, some a woman in, the, in town who's been sleeping with all sorts of guys, and she's not a, a particular catch or anything, but uh, this Bernou that comes from this well-off family is just develops his passionate feeling for her. And in the course of it, he dies. I won't tell why. And Maigret goes to this man's house, finds him dead, and then finds all these letters that he's written to this woman, who's basically kind of a low-class girl in town, a prostitute often. And uh, there's a, this pile of letters in which he's just poured out his soul. And there's a great little scene late in the book when Maigret comes there, and, there, and all the people in town come into this room and there's people wandering around, and they start picking up these letters. And Maigret feels this incredible sense of uh, shame that for, for this man whose kind of life is revealed like that. Each, each one of these books has, has something like that. Um, finally, Maigret's Mistake. Again, I recommend all of these. You don't have to read his books in sequence, but I would certainly look, I would look to the books that were originally written in the late 40s, early 50s to get the real flavor of Maigret. Um, <clears throat> Maigret's Mistake, I've read, I know, a couple of times before, is one of the ones where he sort of is dealing with the characters a little bit like him. And it starts off with the, with the murder of a young girl. And again, the murders are never the, in, the important part, who murders anybody. But in the course of it, he, he, becomes, he, he finds out about a doctor, a man who came from basically a, a working class family who put himself through medical school and became a very famous surgeon. And he's a complete egomaniac who basically does his work. He's brilliant at being this, this doctor. Women all seem to want to protect him and take care of him. His name is Guan, I think. And he's a, he's a famous surgeon. And the entire book is about Maigret meeting all the women around this guy. And he doesn't want to meet the guy at first. He wants to just meet the guys, the women around him. And he's a guy who sounds like almost like a dark version of, of Simonon, who was you know basically in all these different relationships with all these different women. And this doctor, who... Simeon treats pretty coldly, as a, as a very cold person, is uh, at the, as a, in the background, and who seems to care couldn't care less about any of these women who care so much for him. And in the course of the, the interviews, it's basically just a series of interviews, like very, many May Gray books, in which May Gray gets to know the women around this man, and then at the culminating scene, he just sits down and talks to this guy, who really this could care less about anybody. He's a really interesting character particularly through Maigret's eyes, who tends to care a little bit too much. And that's the kind of the Maigret 
charm. So these are the books. I'm, I'm really enjoying reading through these in sequence. I, I particularly am enjoying uh, finding out why you know, they seem so uneven to me. There's there's definitely a, a shift in the in the books. In fact, in the in the forties, uh, Maigret, like like the Reichenbach Falls. You remember Arthur Conan Doyle tried to kill off Sherlock Holmes. He tries to retire Simonon in the in the forties, I believe, and he actually retires. And then basically he just says, okay. He's out of retirement. He's back to work. And he keeps keeps his age. I think May Gray's in his 50s for like about four decades. So he's always in this guy, late, late career character um, with, a, with a long, long stable relationship with his wife who deals with very unstable people. Uh, they're, they're really charming books. Okay, very different from the thrillers as we've talked about. All right, we'll see you soon and uh, talk to you next week. Keep bathing. Oh, and also, there's so I'm putting up announcements on Ultimate Beginners. I'll put one here. We're going to do a, uh, we do a couple of writing workshops online uh, every uh, every so often. We're going to have one starting in the beginning of September. The prices are very reasonable compared to what you get, I think. It's a good deal. And there's great students. We have a lot of great returning students. So we'd love to get some new students. That's the thing. So if you, could, if you see any no of these notices I send around, please pass them on anywhere you can. And think about coming to the class. I think you might enjoy it. We do some reading and we do some writing. All right? Bye.